Now here we are using the units in megahertz. Any practical TV signal will have its bandwidth ranging in megahertz. So how much width from the lower sideband we take from 0.5 megahertz to 1.25 megahertz that comes out to be 0.75 megahertz. So 0.75 megahertz part of the lower sideband is also taken. Upper sideband is from 1.25 megahertz to 5.25 megahertz that makes it 4 megahertz wide. So any practical TV signal will have upper sideband of 4 megahertz. So how much part we are not taking from lower sideband? 3.25 megahertz we are not considering. We are only considering 0.75 megahertz of part. Nevertheless, a small 0.5 megahertz safety margin is also kept which will also contain nothing but part of lower sideband only. The similar margin is kept on the right hand side of the upper sideband also. You can see from 5.25 to 5.75 is the gap which is kept to allow the filter characteristics to come down to zero completely. So 0.5 megahertz gap is there on the right hand side of USB also. So this is all about the first information signal which is the video signal. Any TV signal will also have sound signal as a part of the TV signal. Sound signal will use frequency modulation, FM, that we are going to discuss later on. Now let us quickly try to figure out what are the various frequency values associated with sound signal. The carrier frequency which is modulated by sound signal is at the end of the upper sideband that we have of the video signal. So in this case, let's say it is present at 5.75 megahertz of value, the carrier frequency of the sound signal. But this will not be a fixed value. This will keep on changing from signal to signal. What is more important is the bandwidth of the sound signal. It comes out to be 50 kilohertz. Please remember that only amplitude modulation has bandwidth of twice FM. Now any sound signal can have the maximum frequency of 20 kilohertz, which is the audio frequency value. And hence any sound signal can have maximum bandwidth of uh, 40 kilohertz if you are using amplitude modulation. The reason here bandwidth is greater than 40k and it is 50k is because we are using FM for sound signal transmission. Later on we will see that. FM signal has more bandwidth compared to the AM signal. So if I consider uh, 50 kilohertz bandwidth, then you can see approximately we go up to 6 megahertz if you start from 1.25 megahertz of carrier frequency point. So you get everything of 4.5 megahertz in which 4 megahertz is your upper sideband and 0.5 megahertz is your... So you get 4, 4 megahertz of upper sideband uh, 0.5 megahertz of margin so you get 4.5 megahertz of upper sideband and then there'll be a small part of uh, the sound signal also so if the width is 50 kilohertz the last point will go to 6 megahertz so starting from zero approximately the bandwidth of tv signal will be of 6 megahertz in practical cases considering the safeguards on both the sides of the signal we define the bandwidth of any TV station approximately to be 7 megahertz. So that much frequency band gap you require for the transmission of any TV signal. Exactly the same thing is explained in terms of the response of the filter. You can see the response of the filter is almost flat for the upper side band and then it is reducing a little bit but this reduction is still not less than 3 dB and hence it's part of the passband of the filter only up to 1.25. Beyond that the reduction is very large and becomes zero at the starting point of uh, the entire band of frequencies that we have. On the right hand side uh, also you can see the frequency spectrum of the filter goes down to zero because that's where my video signal ends and the sound signal is separately attached to the video signal and that makes it one complete TV station signal. So this is called vestigial sideband. To summarize, it's nothing but a version of AM system in which you allow upper sideband completely to come at the output side and a small part of lower sideband also. This is to relax a very strict design of the filter which we otherwise require in single sideband transmission.